Killian had been surprised when he popped into Rain's apartment to find two people sitting there. The call had been firm, but not very urgent, and Killian had thought about ignoring it. Killian hadn't been sure if Rain would want to see him so soon after the turbulent time in Vegas, but he wasn't unhappy to see him. Rain's current love interest was known to him and had helped them both immensely during a case last year. Rain would have likely been hurt far worse than he was if not for Tristan, and Killian had to give the kid props. Did I catch at a bad time? Killian asked, sensing something odd. Not at all, Rain said. In fact, Tristan wants to know if he could offer a little trade. Killian raised an eyebrow. A trade? His master, a wizard with no lack of juice, had been a one-time enemy of Killian's, and he knew well the kind of punch he could pack. This one had been working under him, doing something similar to the agency, though more for the living than the dead. Killian knew that Tristan knew things that could be useful. The question was what he wanted in return. I have a job that I think could benefit you as well. Have you ever hunted geistals? Killian made a face that told Tristan all he needed to know. Thankfully, not in a while. It's hard to find an animal with enough trauma upon death to make one. They're nasty when they do form, though. Well, my master's reported a harmful spirit around a burnt-out warehouse that we're pretty sure used to host dogfighting. If you help me out, I'll show you something that I've been working on, something that I think you could benefit from a lot. Killian thought about it without much exuberance. Geistals were nuisances more than anything else. Killian had been sent to clear some up when he'd been freshly made. He and about five other investigators had gone to the site of a gas leak at an old pet store, and it was a case that Killian didn't like to think about. Not because it was particularly gruesome, but because they had spent the better part of seven hours chasing down ghost rabbits and ethereal ferrets and putting ecto puppies out of their misery. Some of the residents had been happy to accept the trip to the hereafter, but some of them had been confused, and that had festered and made them a real problem. Killian had personally shot a golden retriever about the size of a bull off of Agent Roderick when it had bowled him over, and that was something that stuck with you for a while. Killian didn't really want to go anywhere near a place where angry dogs had savaged each other to death, but the idea of secrets from an honest-to-God student of the arcane was too good to pass up. Killian opened his mouth to ask about the particulars, but Tristan waved a hand at him. We can talk about that on the way, the little wizard said. Do I have to agree to some kind of contract to let you ride along, or can you just... As if in answer, Killian slid into the young man and couldn't help a little chuckle as Tristan shuddered like someone had dipped him in ice water. It takes a little getting used to, Rain said, kissing Tristan on the cheek. Be safe, hun. And you, he said clearly talking to Killian, keep my man safe. If he doesn't come back, I'll figure out how to hold you responsible. A few minutes later, they were in the kid's Ford Ranger and making their way to the less savory part of Atlanta. So, what kind of situation are we walking into here? Killian asked as the residential buildings became less and less friendly. A couple of teenage kids brought their dates to the old warehouse so they could smoke a little weed and get a little close. The survivor says they were telling ghost stories, the hash making the stories all the more believable, when a huge ghostly dog leapt in amongst them. It started barking and snarling, and they all made a run for it. Uh, survivor, Chris McClendon, says he made it to the car and got inside, but something hit the side of it and rocked it on its wheels. He told the police that a huge ghost dog was snarling and snapping, ramming at the car as it tried to tip it over. It popped the passenger side wheels with the force of the attack, and when it finally stopped, he called the police and reported what had happened. The police found three bodies at the site, all savaged by a large animal. Chris got lucky, but they still booked him for the drugs and the suspicion that he might be involved somehow. Uh-huh. So, what makes you think this isn't just a dog attack? Because the bodies don't have a single wound on them, Tristan said. Cutter called us down to the morgue. He's our contact at the coroner's office, and all three of those kids looked like they just fell over for no particular reason. But the cops love that. Oh, the cops are having a field day right now. 
They're blaming the coroner's office for mishandling the bodies. They're blaming the EMS service that took the bodies. And they're blaming Christopher, above all else, for giving the kids weed laced with fentanyl. Did he? Tristan was quiet for a few minutes as he navigated the sunset traffic. <sighs> he did, Tristan finally said. But the amounts were so minute that he probably didn't even know it was there. The kid has a record for dealing, though, and to trying to make it stick. That, however, doesn't have anything to do with us. What we're here to do is to make sure that these three kids are the last ones to get mauled by these ghost dogs. And what's this got to do with our deal? Killian asked. He didn't mind helping, but there had been some talk of a deal, and Killian felt he was on the clock. In time, my new ghostly friend, all will be revealed in time. They turned off the interstate and into an area that was mostly warehouses and lots full of bland-looking vehicles. The general sense was industrial, forgotten things owned by forgotten people, and it was the kind of place that Killian had been in life to get information or look for people that the information took him to. People who wanted to hide out often stayed here. People who wanted to do things off the grid, and Killian could believe that more than a few bets had been taken inside that warehouse. The one they were heading to, however, was a skeletal hulk that showed recent fire damage. These kinds of places often came to a sticky end like this. Perhaps it had been torched by an unlucky client. Maybe it was the owner trying to recoup some of his loss with a quick insurance scheme. Either way, people were dead, lives were lost, and only an empty lot was left to let anyone know that something had once existed here. Ready? Tristan asked, looking less than certain himself. As I'll ever be, said Killian, and as the two stepped out of the truck, Killian slid out of the wizard to walk beside him. The sun was going down behind the gutted-out warehouse, and it set the whole scene in a distinctively spooky light. They made their way through the scrub bushes, Killian passing easily through them as Tristan tried to watch for sticks and trash. He was staying quiet, but Killian knew... That wouldn't help much if the Geistrels were on alert. Either way, there would be a fight, and Killian hoped there wasn't a whole pack of hounds waiting for them. Tristan was at the edge of a clump of palmettos when he crouched low and nodded to an empty spot between the scrub bushes and the bones of the warehouse. Sitting in the dirt, worrying at the memories of bones, were the large spirits of four pit bulls. Are you sure about this? Killian whispered not wanting to spook the other. Who's the wizard here? Tristan interrupted. Aren't you just an apprentice? Killian asked back, the pair of them looking through the parted palmetto bushes. Journeyman, Tristan shot back. I've been promoted. Congratulations. I still don't see what that has to do with this. As if in answer, Tristan spread his thumb and forefinger like a gun. Closing his eyes, he began to chant, low and fast, and the sound of it made Killian's skin tingle. It was hard to tell at first with the setting sun as a backdrop, but as the phosphorescence grew, Killian saw something like the end of a sparkler coming to life. He aimed at the group of dogs, careful with his aim, and let it go in a wide arc. Here we go, Tristan whispered, and Killian slid his thirty-eight out of the holster. The bolt fell in the center of the hounds and exploded like a mortar shell. The ghost dogs flew like dandelion fluff, pushed around by the sudden explosion, and Killian whistled as he brought his gun to the ready. Two of them lay panting, the air sucked out of their lungs, but a third kept trying to get up as his legs spasmed and leaked sparkling goo. The fourth shook itself, and the growl that rumbled up its throat made Killian nervous. You're gonna have to get the fourth one, Tristan groaned, closing his eyes as he tried to summon up more of the light. I can only make one of those about every 10 to 20 minutes. The veins were standing out in his forehead, and as Killian took aim, he couldn't help feeling a little impressed. The kid had some punch, to be sure. The fourth dog lumbered forward, disoriented but still ready to fight. Killian took aim as it zigzagged, getting a bead on it as it picked up speed. He would likely only get a single shot before it buried Tristan, but a single shot was all he needed. Killian... Tristan said, getting antsy as the hound came closer and closer to the bushes. The shot took it through the chest, 
and it fell in a limp bundle of sparks as it dissipated into ectoplasm. Two of the others had similarly dissipated, but the last one was still trying to make its destroyed legs hold it up. Killian walked over and dispatched it with a second blast, watching it dissipate without too much fanfare. Hopefully that's all of them, Tristan said, his glowing fingers sparking down as he came towards the pile of ghost ash. Now watch this. He took a crystal out, something small and translucent, and bent down beside Killian. He pressed the crystal into the ghost sludge, and Killian watched as the essence passed from the pile of ash into the gym. It seemed to draw in the particles like a magnet, and when he picked it up again, he held it out for Killian. Yeah, uh, not quite how that works, Chief. What you mean, Tristan asked, still holding it out to him. I'm a ghost, Tristan. I can't interact with things of the living world. You sure? Tristan asked, smiling as he held it closer. Killian shrugged, ready to prove it, but as his fingers came in contact with the crystal, he realized he could touch it. For the first time in nearly 25 years, Killian was touching something real. How was this even possible? It's been imbued with ghost essence. It exists across two worlds, and it holds great potential. Potential? Killian asked, looking at the shimmering gem in the light of the dying day. Think of something you want, something you desire, and it will... <laughs> they both looked up as a snarl split the semi-night. From the wreck of the warehouse came a pack of spectral hounds, and behind them strode a beast as large as an 18-wheeler. Killian counted six, then seven, then possibly a dozen. They were larger than the ones they had put down, and as they strode to meet them, Tristan didn't look quite so sure of himself anymore. Damn, I was hoping these four were it, but it appears there's a whole pack of them. They came in, and Killian snapped off six shots before he could think better of it. Four of them dropped into sparkling pools. Killian's aim appeared to have suffered not over the years, but that still left eight of them charging towards them. Nine, Killian amended, as the thunderous steps of the nightmare hound shook the air around the group. Killian breathed in harshly, feeling like someone had slugged him in the guts, and as he prepared to fire another volley, something whizzed past him like a scud missile. It hit the big brute in the face and sent ectoplasm flying in all directions. Killian looked back to see Tristan dipping another of the crystals into the ectoplasm left behind by the four dogs. What are you waiting for? He shouted, launching another of the flashy projectiles into the swarm. Use the crystal! How? Killian asked, shooting another down as a spasm shook his arm. Just picture something you want and the crystal will be it. You have to focus on it, though. Make it real. Then you can use it. Killian thought at the crystal, but the situation was too hectic. He wanted a gun or a cannon or something to help with, but his mind couldn't settle on anything specific. He shot a leaping hound as it tried to jump on him, and he saw that only a few of them were left. The big mutt was hurt, but it was still coming on strong as it shrugged off another of the missiles that Tristan threw at it. It was nearly on him, ready to bury the wizard under its bulk, and as Killian thought at the piece of rock, he felt it take shape in his hand. Tristan threw another one of those finger bolts at it, but the hound was bearing down on him, looming over him despite being five or six feet away. Tristan had his eyes closed, mumbling a prayer, and when a shower of multicolored sparks hit the thing in the nose, it stopped and slapped at its face in a distinctly doggy fashion. It chuffed and barked, smacking at its snout, but as Tristan turned to run, it loosed a loud bark that shook the rickety old building in its frame. It took a single step, but then something planted itself in its neck, and the dog howled out pitifully. The handle of a knife had buried itself in the side of its thick, ghostly neck, and when it turned to look at Killian, he put three quick shots right between its eyes. It went down in a mass of ghostly fur and rage, disappearing into a shimmer of goo, just like the others in its pack had. Killian took a knee, panting as he tried to get his bearings. 
He'd used a lot of energy on the gun, more than was strictly wise, but it had all been worth it. They weren't going to be chow for ghostly Cujo, it seemed, and he chuckled a little as he tried to find his strength. Not quite as easy as killing rabbits this time, was it, Killian? He asked himself. When the knife stuck into the ground a few inches from his feet, he looked up into the less than impressed face of Tristan. A knife. Really, Killian. I'm over here making a one-man fireworks show, and you throw a goddamn knife. Killian picked up the blade and stuck it in his belt, the weight of it feeling oddly solid. I was under pressure. It was the best I could do on short notice. It worked, didn't it? Tristan offered him a hand, but seemed to understand the futility. Would it be easier if you used my body? He asked. Killian lifted an eyebrow. Don't take it the wrong way, Tristan, but... You aren't exactly my type. Oh, go to hell, Tristan said, but he laughed as he sat down by the old ghost. So does it turn back into a crystal now? Tristan shrugged. No clue. What do you mean you don't know? Killian said, looking at him in disbelief. It's not an exact science, Killian. It's magic, and it does what it will sometimes. He looked at the knife on Killian's belt dubiously, not sure what to make of it. It's definitely different from anything I've ever seen. Killian thought it looked like the flightman's knife that he'd once had from his grandpa. The blade wasn't monstrous long, but it was long enough. The handle was smooth metal with leather wraps, and he knew that if he wrapped his hand around the handle, it would fit like a dream. Despite how it looked, Killian knew that it wasn't quite what it seemed, though. I can tell you one thing, Tristan said, a knife would be very likely to come into contact with more ectoplasm. That knife could be very powerful the more you use it. Killian patted the blade, glad to have a new weapon for whatever might come. Thanks, Tristan. I'd say this is more than an even trade for today's work. Come on, Tristan said. We'd better get out of here before something worse than ghost dogs shows up. As Killian flowed into the young man, he wondered what else these strange crystals might be able to do. You're still here. Thanks so much for joining us for tonight's spooky tale. If you'd like a little bit more spooky in your life, why not click on one of the videos that appears at the end of our story? Or maybe head on over to one of our playlists where you can get your fill of spooky content. If you like your spooky a little more tactile, I've got a new book that's come out. If you'd like your own copy, there's a link below in the description where you can get your own copy of my spooky book. If you like what you see here on the channel and think you might like to support in a more monetized way, then why not come over to Patreon or become a member on YouTube? Speaking of, let's go ahead and thank our members now. Thanks to Siv Garstead and Unicorn Hollow for being our spooky ghost contributors. Thanks to Janet, Lee Kendall, Psycat, Rhonda J, and Sue Casper for being our spooky skeleton contributors. And thanks to Hi Stacy, Winter, Zoronan, Emily Coltsfoot, Stephanie Carrington, Tyler Parker, Cinnamon Fox, Sarah ASMR42, and Bella Lee for being our ghostly reader tier contributors. Thanks everyone so much. We just couldn't do the show without you. If you too would like to support the show, come on down to Patreon or become a member on YouTube. For just $5 a month, you get your stories 12 hours early at 8.30 a.m. as opposed to 8.30 p.m. Also, if you'd like to join our Ghostly Reader contributor tier over on Patreon, you get a book anytime I write one on your doorstep, as long as you live in the continental U.S., of course. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Dr. Plague, signing off. Have a wonderful evening.